Hi, this is Kim. Stay tuned. I'm going to teach you how to embellish your garments with iron-on vinyl today. Hey, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the place to be if you want to take your sewing to the next level. First of all, before I get to anything else, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for the birthday wishes um, that were posted on our Facebook group for me. Today was my birthday. It's been a fantastic day. Um, I started out with um, my uh, daughter uh, sent me a beautiful print. I'm not going to show it to you now because I'm framing it and I'm going to put it up in here and I'll show it to you then. But it's a beautiful quote from Proverbs about a woman working with her hands and it has a sewing machine. It's just beautiful. And then my um, daughter-in-law showed up with the two littlest grandchildren and we had lunch from Chick-fil-A or they, as they would say, chick fil -A. And we had a fantastic lunch and they brought me cards and cupcakes and balloons, but they flew away. <laughs> And um, they drew me, uh, they drew me the cutest little cards. And then uh, my husband um, brought home a really nice gift for me, a little a picture frame that we can email pictures to, which is going to be great. And it's just been fantastic. So thank you everyone for the great birthday wishes. Now I'm just going to go ahead and get down to the business of iron on vinyl. A lot of you have asked me how to do the iron on vinyl and I have been doing this for a long time. I've had a silhouette for probably a good seven or eight years. Uh, I've gone through three versions of that and recently I just purchased a Cricut Maker and I'm in love with a Cricut Maker. I would highly recommend it, um, just highly. So I want to show you today the basics, kind of go through what you have to know to do iron on vinyl. Keep in mind there are other things you can do with the Cricut to embellish your garments, such as stencils and painting and um, lots and lots of different things. But just for today, we're gonna talk about iron on vinyl. So let's start with the very basics. What is it? It is vinyl, especially for heat application. So in other words, it's not sticky. So here's a little scrap. It's not sticky on the back. So it is on though an adhesive carrier. So once you get it, the design cut, then it will, you'll remove the excess and then you'll have a, be able to stick it on long enough to iron it on. So that's how it's kind of different from adhesive vinyl in that way. It only adheres with heat. Whereas adhesive vinyl is sticky and will stick to whatever you put it on, this will only be uh, stuck down if it's heated. The carrier sheet though has adhesive. Um, not permanent adhesive, but just enough to kind of hold it down while the heat's applied. You can apply it to a lot of things. A lot of people think you can only do it on cloth, but you can do it on wood and leather and a lot of different other things. Um, it's actually very useful. Of course, the most popular are t-shirts. And I'm gonna show you today the process of making this t-shirt uh, for a little three-year-old girl that I know. And this for a future baby gift to someone. <laughs> so the way that you um, get your designs cut is they have to be cut with some kind of a die cutting machine. You can use a Cricut, a Silhouette, um, a Brother Scan and Cut, and I believe Janome makes one called an Artistry. And there are probably many more out there, uh, but those are the ones that are I'm most familiar with. Um, I've never used a Brother Scan and Cut, so I really can't tell you how they differ. Please, if you have one, let us know in the comments. I'm sure everybody has like you know, the favorite thing about what they have. All I know is the silhouette and the cricket. So um, I'm open to hearing what you have to say about the others. So it can differ with each machine, um, what kind of file that you actually need. So there are a lot of places that sell cut files. And most of the time when you buy a cut file, you get it in a lot of different formats. 
So for the Cricut, usually like an SVG or a PNG file are uh, what's required. You can also work with a JPEG file, but you have to um, kind of play with it a little to get it to the point where it will actually cut on the lines. With a silhouette, you can use a, a JPEG, you can use a PDF, you can use a DXF um, or a silhouette file. Silhouette's a little more uh, proprietary with their files. So uh, you can't put an SVG file into the basic Silhouette software. Um, you can upgrade it to the designer edition and then you're able to do that. <clears throat> now your cut settings are also going to differ with each machine. The Silhouette and Cricut both have it real easy for you. They have default settings. You choose the material and then it will choose the right cut settings. As you move on with it, there might be some times when you want to tweak them and then you can usually also save them so for future reference. So, um, you know, really the sky's the limit um, as far as your preferences and how you like things cut. And you should, uh, you should refer to your manual of whatever machine you have to the cut settings they recommend for each different kind of substrate. You can do a design that has multiple layers, as in this shirt that I made for my granddaughter. This is the Ellie and Mac Twisted Up shirt. I put Marie from the Aristocats on here. And in order to use multiple colors, it has to be layered. And it's super easy. You just apply one layer, then apply the next, and apply the next. And it's really pretty easy. It's kind of like a coloring book, so it's not hard at all. But I did just did want to show you, I'm not going to show you this technique because it's advanced, but I will show you that it is possible. And I will do more tutorials and show you some of the more advanced things too later on. This is for basics today. Now, another thing you want to remember when you cut your designs in any of the machines, that the vinyl, this is the part that would be sticking up on your shirt. This is the carrier side. The glossy side has the carrier. Okay, so you're going to be putting it face down on your mat. So what you're going to end up with, if you don't mirror the design, you're going to end up with a backwards design. So you need to make sure that you flip it horizontally so that the machine will cut it out backwards and then when you turn it over, it will be correct. Okay, so don't forget to mirror your design. I have ruined vinyl that way more than once. <laughs> so everybody will do it at least once. I have a friend who put on the inside of her silhouette cover, did you mirror? <laughs> because it actually can be very daunting to forget. So, you know, you always want to remember the silhouette design, I mean, excuse me, the Cricut design space has a nice little um, feature that you just click that says mirror, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, after you cut the design, then you're going to do a process called weeding. And I'm going to be showing you that in a few minutes. And basically that is, is just pulling away the excess vinyl and then it will just leave the design on the carrier sheet. It goes from being super simple, which is what I'm going to show you, okay, to a lot more intricate. And it isn't any special technique to do this. It's just time, basically. Um, it takes a lot of time just to go through and pull out all the little pieces out of a design. Sometimes there's not, there's no rocket science about it. There's no fast way to do it. It's just a matter of um, just taking the time to pull out all the little pieces. And it just takes a little patience is all. So um, I am going to show you quickly how I did this. And um, you can translate that into anything because it's the same way for every design. Now when you... Um, want to iron your design on, you have a couple of choices. You can use, uh, Cricut has a line, what they call of easy presses. And it's just, um, they're basically like square shaped irons. Um, they have a small and a medium and a large. And then they have this little mini press, which I actually have one. I think it's called the mini press. I have this. This is a little small easy press or mini press. And um, I use this for um, designs on doll clothes. Um, I put labels in the back of clothes and I'll use this. It's also really good just to, for pressing um, if you have something really small. 
it's almost like a little project iron. So um, this is really handy. For my bigger jobs, I use my heat press. Now this heat press has been sort of a workhorse for me. I've had it for a long time. This is from Amazon and I will link it below. It's very inexpensive, um, but it does the job. <laughs> Nothing fancy, but it does a really great job and it heats nice and even. And a tip, when you have a heat press, one thing you can do with it that is really good is that you can ply your interfacing in your heat press. All you do is you put it down and if it calls for steam, all you need to do is either lay a wet towel on top of it before you push, press it down or I just keep a little spray bottle and I spray the back of the interfacing and then I just fuse it on and it works really, really well. Gets it uh, nice and um, even and it stays really put really well with no bubbles and stuff. So that's a wonderful way to put interfacing on. So it might even be worth buying just for that. <laughs> I think maybe it would be. When you go to iron it on, what you wanna do is you wanna just um, preheat your shirt a little bit or whatever it is you're putting it on. And then you're just gonna want to, I usually do the, the cycle once um, with a Teflon sheet. You always want to use a Teflon sheet so that it doesn't stick, the vinyl won't stick to the heat press and make a big mess. So you just put the vinyl sheet on top and you press it. And then um, what I do is then I'll remove the carrier and I'll just use the Teflon sheet and press it again, just to make sure it's down there good. I don't want it to fall off in the wash or, or anything like that. Usually two times is plenty. Now, as far as design sizes on t-shirts, what I can tell you um, is that if you're doing a baby onesie, I do about four by four. If you're doing a little uh, child's t-shirt, small child, like this is a, like a two to four, um, this is a six by six design. And as you go, you just make them a little larger and a little larger. And um, on a full on man's shirt, it's about 11 by 11. And on a lady's, it's about nine by nine if it's a fitted shirt. So that's uh, basically, I'm gonna have a little cheat sheet for you to download. Um, it'll be linked in the comments and you can check that out. Now, as far as washing the vinyl, what you wanna do is you want to tell whoever you give this to, to please turn the item inside out to wash it. Try to do it in cold water and not a hot dryer, okay? You don't want it to be in like a high temperature dryer. A warm, light warm dryer won't hurt, but you want to um, make sure that you don't heat it up and you know melt your design off of your shirt. So when I purchase cut files, I design a lot of my own, but when I do purchase them, they're usually either from Etsy. There's a lot of shops on Etsy who uh, sell them, especially like specific Disney things. Um, and then there are also files on designbundles.net. And they're one of my favorite places to find uh, great things. This is one that I did myself, um, but this one is from designbundles.net. And um, I love it. That's one of my favorite songs. And there's this little girl at church who w walks around singing this song all the time. So I thought maybe for my demonstration, I'd just make her a little shirt. As far as purchasing vinyl, I would highly recommend the brand Sizer or Caesar, I think is what they call it. S-I-S-E-R, Easy Weed, is a really great vinyl, multi-purpose vinyl. They also have like a flex that is for stretchy things that's really good for athletic wear and um, they also have patterned vinyl. A good place to buy vinyl is expressionsvinyl.com. They have a ton of different patterns and colors. They carry the Caesar and it's a really a nice place to shop and they have lots of sales and their prices are pretty good. Um, craftvinyl.com is also good. He's real slow on delivery, but really good stuff and um, really good prices. So I would just look for Sizer Easy Weed. Um, don't buy an off-brand. Try to stick with Caesar because it is the best. And if you've ever tried to weed an off-brand vinyl, you'll find out real quick why it's worth purchasing the name brand stuff. And I can tell you that 12 by 12 sheet of Caesar Easy Weed is gonna be anywhere from a couple dollars 
up to four, depending on where you buy it. Don't usually pay more than $3. I buy everything on sale, that's my motto. I don't buy anything if it's not on sale, unless I really, really need it. Um, so definitely shop around and get the best deal, but just buy the Caesar and you'll be okay. All right, with that, I'm gonna cut to a video where I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit of how I did this. I'm doing some screenshots for you of uh, Cricut Design Space on my iPad. I will tell you the reason that I switched from the Silhouette to the Cricut is very simple. For 19 years in the photography business, I was chained to a laptop. And I am just done with laptops. I, I do everything on the 2020 iPad Pro and with the Cricut, you can do everything that you can do on a computer on your iPad. Silhouette has yet to release a good enough app that you can solely use an iPad. And I just wanted to be unchained. And that was the only holdout in my like life, of, you know, the things I normally do that wasn't, uh, that, that required a computer. So I now have the maker and I'm just thrilled because I do not have to drag out my laptop to do my um, Cricut stuff. So I'm very happy with that. So I hope you enjoy this demonstration and I'll be back after. So first I'm going to open up Cricut Design Space on my iPad and I want to uh, start a new design. So I'm just gonna click on new project. I'm just gonna replace this uh, what was on my canvas before. I have a blank canvas. Now I want to make a onesie for a baby. So I'm going to look for the image that I want. This is for a baby girl. So I'm going to, I know I uploaded this image. So I'm going to open uploaded image. And I see my necklace right there. So I'm going to click that. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to click insert. Okay. And then we're going to size this at four by four, which is what I suggest for uh, for babies, infants, um, newborns especially. And that is what I need. Now I'm going to um, get my vinyl. Okay, I'm going to place that on my mat. Okay. And then I'm going to click down here, this green little C here is make it. Click that, and you'll see that it is getting ready to cut. So if you look up here, it ha shows the mat and what uh, where it's placed on the mat. So what I'm going to do is you always want to click this mirror for iron-on because this is iron-on. Even though this is a symmetrical design, it won't really matter, but I'm clicking it just to show you. And then when you get it to that point... You can also move this around if you want to have it on a different spot. Um, there's another thing you can do with Snap Mat, which I can show in a later video. Um, so you're going to go ahead and click this C down here, continue. And then your Cricut Maker or whatever Cricut you have is going to show up there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and let it connect. All right, and I'm gonna choose my um, substrate here. And there are a lot right here, but if you click in uh, all materials, you'll see there are tons and tons and tons and tons of things you can choose from. But I'm just gonna go with Everyday Iron-On, okay? And now it's telling me to load the tools and mat, and that is happening on the Cricut itself. So I'm going to go ahead and, and cut this project, and then I'm going to show you that portion on the next project. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go back to my canvas and just get rid of that. And I am going to now cut another one for a little child. And I'm going to upload an image. So I'm, go I'm going to open the upload, open the uploaded images. And I'm looking for a little thing about Waymaker. Okay, so I'm going to choose that little Waymaker graphic. 
and I'm going to insert. And for this one, I need to make it about six by six because it's for like a 2T. And normally, that's pretty good for a toddler. So I'm going to go ahead and click Make It. All right, I'm going to make sure that I mirror it. And I'm going to go ahead and continue. And again, I'm going to select Everyday Iron-On. Sorry, I'm going to place my vinyl on the mat with the adhesive side down and the uh, mat side up. The adhesive side is kind of glossy. Okay. And next, I am going to be taking it over to the Cricut Maker. We can hear the Cricut continuing over there. But I'm going to go ahead and weed this design. And what weeding is, is you are pulling out all the pieces of vinyl that you don't need. So this one's going to be a real easy one to do. I'm going to put, bring some more light over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and weed this now. It's a little bit difficult to see, but I don't know if you can see that there's the cut. You can kind of see the cut lines there. But you're just going to grab it in a place where there is no design. So usually a corner works good. And then you're just going to peel that slowly back, pulling all the pieces of vinyl that aren't part of your design. So watch for text. There's like the middle of an O or something like that. But with this one, it'll be pretty straightforward, except for between the two sets of pearls. You just Pull them off gently. Sometimes going diagonally is good. This one doesn't matter that much, but. And we're just gonna go ahead and weed that. And then I've gotta find that piece in the middle to pull out. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. And pull it out. And since this is an adhesive um, vinyl, you don't have to worry about it sticking on each other or anything. But there I have my pearls to put on the onesie. So next we're going to go to the heat press and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, first we're going to go ahead and get this little onesie ready by just warming it up a little bit. And getting the wrinkles out of it. My heat press is set, as you can see, to about 330 degrees, okay? And then I'm just going to go ahead and place my design on there. See, I've placed my design on the onesie. Got the little necklace, okay? Now when I do something like that, a onesie or something, I need to have something underneath it so that these little ridges can keep the heat from getting to it. So I just have a little folded towel. Um, you can buy like specialized pillows and stuff for this kind of thing, but you know, I just use what I have because I'm frugal that way. <laughs> so just go ahead and put that underneath so that when you push down, the pressure will go all the way on to the design and not be inhibited by these little ribbings on the onesie. All right, and then go ahead and put my Teflon sheet on top. And I'm just going to go ahead and count it. Now I have this set at 330 and 25 seconds. All right, just lift it up. Let's see if that's going on all right. I'm just going to go ahead and try to peel the design off and see how we do. It's looking good. Looks real good. See? There's the design. And then I usually just take the protecting film off of it and I go ahead and I put my 
Teflon sheet on it again. This time it's really important because if you didn't, the vinyl would just melt onto your press. And then I just go ahead and I close it. Because there's that pad in there, I can't lock it down, but I can hold it just as firmly as I possibly can. Okay. And the onesie is finished. Now for the next design, it's a flat t-shirt, so I don't need this pad for this one. I just have this little uh, two to four T shirt. This is just one you can buy at Hobby Lobby. Of course, a lot of times I just make them, but for this purposes of this demonstration, I had a few in my stash that I had purchased. There's a special little girl who wants this one, so I'm not gonna say who it is because her mommy might be watching. Okay, so I got that all warmed up just like I did the last time. And sometimes what I'll do with the design is sort of hold it, find the center, kind of fold it on itself, uh, not the sticky side, but the other side. And then that way I can kind of find the middle of the shirt and place it really well. All right. Now all I need to do is put my Teflon sheet And I can go ahead and close it all the way down this time. What's really fun is to have a couple of designs for onesies just in you know your back pocket so that when you have a baby shower gift or you're taking a dinner to a new mommy, you can just throw a onesie together and put it with whatever else you're going to give as a gift. So, okay, I'm gonna go do the same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the film because this is a warm peel vinyl. If it were a cold peel, you'd need to wait a little bit. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put the Teflon sheet on it and do it one more time. Sometimes people don't do that. I like that assurance <laughs> of knowing that, you know, it was done long enough and that it's not gonna come off in the wash or anything like that. Okay, and we have an adorable little shirt. Well, I hope that helps you, gives you an overview of iron-on vinyl. I will be adding on to this and showing you some more advanced things once in a while. Of course, this channel is all about sewing. I'm also going to link below a few of my favorite uh, t-shirt patterns and um, they're great to use. Don't worry about buying blank t-shirts. If you can sew them, you know that they're gonna be a lot nicer. Um, if you do want to find a place to find inexpensive t-shirts, I'll tell you three places. JiffyShirts.com online has the best prices of blank shirts, really, really inexpensive. Like I'm talking two and a half dollars, really inexpensive. Joann's will have sales every now and then of their gildan shirts and they are very reasonable as well and um, the other place i was going to tell you is hobby lobby they always have their shirts at 30 percent off um, and sometimes they mark them down even more than that and once in a while if you take your 40 percent coupon up they will mark it back to regular price and take the 40 off instead of 30. So um, not every place will do that. Not every Hobby Lobby, but um, mine does. So <laughs> I guess if you just get a nice person at the cashiers, maybe they'll do that for you. So that is my best tip for sourcing um, vinyl and shirts. And uh, of course, I'm going to link down below uh, my favorite t-shirt patterns, starting with the classic tee, which has an excellent fit. What I'm wearing today is the Lark tee from Grainline, and um, there's a couple others. Uh, the um, Mandy Boat tee from Tasuti is really nice. The um, Uvita, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but the Uvita tee from Itch to Stitch is a free pattern. So there are lots and lots of great t-shirt patterns out there. Of course, my favorite is the classic tee, 
and it's not free but it's only five dollars so i mean it's you know not expensive pattern at all so have a fantastic week i will be with you um here and there i'm leaving in the morning for texas um, god willing and um, we are going to set out an adventure driving tomorrow morning. We haven't driven there in a lot of years. We have usually flown, but because of COVID, we think it's safer to drive. So we're going to take our time and get to my brother's on Saturday. So I'm looking forward to that. And as soon as I'm done with this video here, I'm going to record yet tonight. So if you see me in the same clothes, you know why. I'm going to record at least one more for um, next week. I'm going to try and um, have two for you next week. Fortunately, maybe one or two of them won't be filmed here in the sewing room. They might just be um, in a different background, but they'll still be good, um, good information anyway. So I hope that you have a fantastic holiday and um, I will be here with videos. Uh, there will be no chat this week or next. And um, I hope to see you all soon on the Facebook group. And if you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and click that button down there and join the crowd. All right, have a fantastic holiday, happy sewing. Hey, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the place to be if you wanna take your sewing to the next level. First of all, before I get to anything else, I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you for the birthday wishes um, that were posted on our Facebook group for me. Today was my birthday. It's been a fantastic day. Um, I started out with um, my, uh, daughter uh, sent me a beautiful print. I'm not going to show it to you now but because I'm framing it and I'm going to put it up in here and I'll show it to you then. But it's a beautiful quote from Proverbs about a woman working with her hands and it has a sewing machine. It's just beautiful. And then my um, daughter-in-law showed up with the two littlest grandchildren and we had lunch from Chick-fil-A or they, as they would say chick fil -fue. And we had a fantastic lunch and they brought me cards and cupcakes and balloons, but they flew away. <laughs> and um, they, drew me, uh, they drew me the cutest little cards. And then uh, my husband um, brought home a really nice gift for me, a little a picture frame that we can email pictures to, which is gonna be great. And it's just been fantastic. So.